Hello everybody, greetings and welcome. My name is Wake, and this is Let's Play Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Yep, that's right. This is going to be a simultaneous Let's Play where we're going to be going through all three of the games at once, challenging the Elite Four, and of course collecting every Pokemon I can along the way in order to ultimately complete the Pokedex 100%, all 151. And for Pokemon Yellow, I'll be doing something special, but we'll get to that in just a moment. For now, let's get right into the game. I'm gonna go down to options here, and make sure my tech speed is fast, my battle animations are on, because I like them, and for my red game, I'm going to do shift, and for my blue game, I'm going to do set. Just to see how each of those options impacts the gameplay, because I know I'm curious. So now, let's start a new game! And of course we have to go through Oak's dialogue here. Ah, here we go. My name... is... Wake. I'm gonna be Awake on Red. And of course I'm doing it in all caps because, well, I don't know, everybody's name in this game is all caps. And now we get to name his grandson. Now... Well, I always call him something, uh, well, like D-Bag or Jerk or Asswipe. Uh, I'm gonna go with Asswipe on this one. Just because, I don't know, you just have to name him something derogatory. Yeah, he's an Asswipe. Alright, we can play the Super Nintendo, which is coincidentally what I'm playing this on. And always get the free potion from the PC. And for some reason, Mom is gonna talk about um, all boys leave home someday. It's said so on TV, so apparently she believes everything she sees on TV, I guess. She, and she straight up lies to me and says that Professor Oak is looking for me next door, but if you fucking go over there, he's not there. She's a fucking liar, so... Try to leave the town, for whatever reason, which is completely outside of the bounds of logic. And now the game advances. Blah blah blah. And now we get to pick a Pokemon, but Asswipe is being an Asswipe. Shut up, Asswipe. Be patient. For Red, I'm going to go with Charmander as my starter. Which isn't my favorite, but, you know, gotta make choices. And I currently do not have a nickname for this guy, so I'll save him for later. Maybe when I get to Lavender Town, I'll, I'll have thought of something. And of course, because he's an asswipe, he's gonna pick the type that is, uh, ha ad has an end. What am I trying to say here? It has an advantage over mine. In this case, he picks Squirtle because it's a water type. And battle! Now, the outcome of this battle is purely determined by random number generation. That's right. It's, um, slightly in my favor, I think, but. If Squirtle decides to tail whip a whole bunch, I should be okay. I think it's better when they have. Tail Whip instead of, a uh, Growl, because, uh, oh shit, that was a critical hit? Damn. That really sucks. But hopefully he, his AI just sucks and I just keep getting critical hits or something. I don't know. Uh, it's looking good for me. Tackle, ouch. I missed my hurt, depending on my defense. Ah. Looks like my defense is pretty good. Or his attack is pretty shitty. Depending on the starting stats, which are, of course, random within a certain... range. Nice. No problem. It doesn't matter if you beat him or not, but the little XP boost for a, a nice level up is okay. It's pretty good. So my stats aren't great. My speed is actually pretty damn good for a Charmander, I think. I'm not too familiar with starting stats, but they generally range from like 9 to 13-ish. Right, so now we have to go all the way to Pallet Town to get Professor Oak's custom Pokeball so we can deliver it to him to get the Pokedex. Meanwhile, let's go see what's going on in blue version. Hey everybody, I'm blue here, or you guys can call me Eon. This guy over here, well, he's an Inwa. You Inwa. I start off by picking Squirtle because he is the best starting Pokemon in the original series. Don't argue with me, it's the truth. And then we're gonna fight Inwa over here. He's gonna send out Bulbasaur and that thing's gonna growl at me because uh, he's an asshole, or he's an Inwa. But I'm just gonna retaliate by spamming tackle and hopefully I'll get some lucky crits. Like that. And there we go. It's in the bag.
Okay, now it's time for Pokemon Yellow. And this is a special playthrough because I'm going to use only Pikachu and I will capture no other Pokemon whatsoever. I'm going to get the free Bulbasaur for Cut and the free Squirtle for Surf and Strength. And that's it. Po Pikachu will be my champion. And what you're seeing right now is me restarting the game over and over again to try and get a Pikachu that has good stats. Which I eventually succeed in doing. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well... Brock is going to be freaking difficult with only Pikachu. You're going to have to do a lot of grinding. Half true. Brock is going to be difficult, but I am not going to have to do much grinding at all. And we're going to see that later. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit more. And then we're going to see the Pikachu right here. And those are some good stats. I'm not sure if they're the highest actual DBs you can get, but these are really damn good. And we'll come back to this in a little while. I'm going to battle everything I can on the way because my goal for this episode is to beat Brock with only my Charmander. Which isn't as uh, hard as it sounds. And we'll get to that later, of course. So most people know about this guy, which if you talk to him, he'll give you another free potion. That's number two. Here we go. Professor Oak's cust custom whatever parcel. It's a Pokeball. Let's go. Here you go, you lazy old man. I found your thing. And here comes Asswipe, because uh, why not? And yes, I know the Pokedex that has absolutely no data whatsoever about any Pokemon, even though there surely has to be some information out in this world about them. He was just too lazy to put it on there, so why not have a blank one? But of course, the practical purpose is for collecting all of them, so... Lore be damned. We don't need lore. And I'm just gonna grab the town map from... Gary's sister here, or Asswipe's sister, or whatever the hell her name is. Thank you, don't really need it, but I'll take it anyway. Alright, let's get back to Viridian City. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead straight into Viridian Forest. I shouldn't need to stop by the Poke Center yet. And thank God that this guy doesn't need to feel the need to talk to me like he does on Yellow. And uh, here's the third free potion on this bush here. So I'm gonna grab that. Alright, this is the first dungeon type area, Viridian Forest. I'm gonna grab this antidote that's hanging out on this tree. And there's a free Pokeball up here on the top left area, but I'm not gonna grab it just yet. Because I need to level up and go fight Asswipe over on Route 22. And the reason for that is... Well, if you fight Asswipe, or your rival, on Route 22, before you get a Pokeball, and then you talk to Professor Oak, he will give you a stack of five free Pokeballs, which is interesting, something that I didn't know before. So right now my goal is to go through Viridian Forest and pretty much get as much level ups as I can by fighting the trainers that are here. Which should be absolutely no problem because I'm going to get Ember in two levels, which will pretty much annihilate all of these bug Pokemon in one hit. As the Master Pikachu Trainer, I have one goal, and that is to raise the strongest Pikachu I possibly can. That means fighting everybody and everything that I come across. That basically makes this a genocide run with a Pikachu. The trainers in this forest aren't any challenge whatsoever. They fall under the might of my Thundershock. And you think you're smart with your rock slash ground types, Brock? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> I don't care. That doesn't scare me. You think you got me beat? Oh, well, I've got you beat before I even walk in the door, because I've got a plan, see? Yeah. Brock may be tough, and his Pokemon might be immune to electric attacks, but he's not immune to my intelligence. I don't need to grind at all to beat him. Just you wait, Brock. I'm coming for you. 
You're going down, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. You better be afraid, because here comes me and my Pikachu. And there's nowhere you can hide. That badge is as good as mine. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's the first trainer down. There's only a couple more, but we should have enough levels after doing this to take on Asswipe. It may be useful to pick up some extra antidotes before coming into the forest because these guys do have Weedles, and if you're unlucky, you can get poisoned. Now, there's a couple available here in the forest, but I have had bad... RNG before, so it would have been smart for me to pick up a couple extra. There we go, level 9. Time to burn him! And Ember. That's what I'm talking about. Just in time. Ember. Don't care about your hardened, bro. This is a special attack. What? In terms of ease of clearing Viridian Forest, Charmander is by far the easiest because of Ember. And next, I would say Pikachu has the second easiest time. Then Squirtle. But Bulbasaur? Oh god. So help you, Bulbasaur. Everybody else has special attack moves in Ember, Thundershock, and Bubble, which are quite effective against all of the bug Pokemon here, but Bulbasaur's Vine Whip is very resisted, so he will have to resort to Tackle, and he doesn't have that good of an attack stance, so if you picked Bulbasaur, you're gonna have a bad time. I'm sorry, there's no way around that. There are various types of Pokemon around here that I will be able to catch, but I'm planning on doing that after I get the free Pokeballs from Oak. I'm gonna pick up this free potion. Oh, yeah. And right in front of this trainer is free potion number five. Alright, so here we got the last trainer. You ever notice how the the bug catchers, like, what, what's up with the armpit, man? Like, what, he's got, like, armpit stains or, or, I don't know. Level 11 is good. I should be able to take on Asswipe now. Let's head back and fight everything we can on the way. Come on, Asswipe. Bring it. So this guy has a Spearow and a Squirtle, I think. Nope, it's a Pidgey. He has a Spearow in yellow, that's what it is. Should be able to get by with just Ember. Nice crit! Oh, fuck the sand attack. That's the worst. Come on. Ow. Come on, Charmander, you got this. Come on, dude. No! Got him. That'll take him out. Yes. Level up, please. Yes. Let's take a look at those stats. Eh, they're not great, but they're not bad either. The speed is, like, surprising. I'm gonna use whatever is going to do the most damage. Bubble's going to be... inconsequential. Damn it, unless I keep missing, which is going to be terrible. Come on. Okay, scratch is better. Please keep tail whipping, that's fine with me. I should probably use a potion. Let's use a potion. Come on, dude. The fucking sand attack really messed up my accuracy. Come on!
One more. Oh, shit. It's really risky to continue without potioning. Nice. Scratch. Yes. Got him. Two potions used. I did luck out, but I was also prepared. Let's take a look at how Yellow handled the fight with Gary. Or the rival, or whatever the hell his name is. I was a bit cocky on Yellow and decided to fight D-Bag, is his name, before heading into Viridian Forest and without resting at the Pokemon Center, so I'm at half health at level 7. I take out the Spearow in two Thundershocks, proceed to Thunder Wave his Eevee, and Thundershock him four times, the last one being a crit, which takes him out. Piece of cake. Okay, I want you to forget about Brock with only Pikachu. I want you to forget about Brock with only Charmander. You want a real challenge? You're gonna fight your rival on Route 22 with only Squirtle at level 8 before heading into Viridian Forest. That's a real challenge. Yeah? You don't believe me? Well, check this out. Inwa leads up with a level 9 Pidgey. While that may seem unintimidating on the surface, he's a real pain in the ass. He has a strong affection for the Sand Attack and it will make your life a living hell. Since Blue only has a Squirtle, he cannot take the Pidgey down fast enough to evade it, nor can he swap out into another Pokemon in order to clear the effect. With the sand levels building, his accuracy quickly falls to the absolute minimum, and he must use all of his potions, surviving the Pidgey's onslaught of gusts, hoping for his attacks to land. But the Pidgey is just a warm-up. Inwa's Bulbasaur is level 8, and knows both Growl and Leech Seed. He is resistant to Bubble, and has fairly decent defense to boot. He can easily withstand Squirtle's tackles, while mounting a counter-offensive series of Growls to further send Squirtle's offensive capabilities into the gutter, all while slowly regenerating his health, laughing at his face. How can Squirtle possibly survive? It doesn't matter how many potions Blue brings into this fight, it all comes down to luck. After two failures, Blue is on the brink, ready to give up, losing hope. But he believes in Squirtle, he pushes him with all he's got, to the limit! Let's watch the final battle unfold. Pidgey leads off with a gust. His higher speed allows him to make the first move, and Squirtle retaliates with a bubble, taking off one-fifth of Pidgey's health. Here comes the sand attack. Squirtle's gonna have a hard time hitting his mark now, and he misses the second bubble. The third bubble, another miss. Pidgey's laying on the hurt with the gust. Squirtle misses for the third time in a row. And another sand attack, adding insult to injury. I fucking hate sand. I don't like sand. It's coarse, rough, and irritating. Squirtle finally lands another bubble, but with that attack power, he'll need at least three more. Cutting it close with the 2 HP blue, time to use a potion. Squirtle lands two bubbles in a row! A critical hit! Pidgey's defeat is imminent! And a third sand attack! And after a rough exchange... Pidgey goes down! But the battle is far from over! Blue still has to contend with Enwa's Bulbasaur! Bulbasaur leads off with a Leech Seed. This does not look good for Blue. Squirtle lands a Tackle, but Bulbasaur recoups some of that damage instantly. Blue has one potion left. Can he land enough hits to chip down the Bulbasaur? Come on, if I could fucking land hits on him, I could beat him, but fuck the Sand Attack. Bulbasaur is getting whittled down bit by bit, but Squirtle's hurting, falling below half health. A critical hit! Blue will need at least one more of those to end this quickly. Bulbasaur leeches some health back and forces Blue to use his last potion. A growl! Squirtle's offense is quickly diminishing. 
Another critical hit, but it's not enough. Squirtle's attack is hardly enough to break through Bulbasaur's Leech Seed. Squirtle falls below half health again while Bulbasaur hangs on strong. Another growl! Squirtle's at 7 HP and Bulbasaur is continuing to regenerate. Squirtle misses! Oh, and Bulbasaur lands a tackle! Squirtle's at 3 HP! This is it! It's all down to this, folks! Squirtle needs to land a critical hit to seal this victory! And he misses! It looks like it's all over! Oh my god! Oh my god! Squirtle! 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 You the man! You the fucking man! Who's the fucking man? You the fucking man, Squirtle! You the best, dog! You the motherfucking best! Yeah! Take that, you NY! You eat that shit! Yeah! Fuck you! After a well-deserved victory, Red, Blue, and Yellow return to Pallet Town to claim their five free Pokeballs from Professor Oak. It's already been a test of strength and determination, but our heroes have only just begun their journey to the Pokemon League. Their rivals will only continue to grow stronger, but they too vow to become the very best, and they set their sights on the horizon through the forest, onwards to Pewter City to challenge Brock. <laughs>